Good morning, guys. I'm sitting here with a hot chocolate. If you're new here, my name is Laura. Welcome back to my channel. I am honestly so wiped out. I've had two really poor nights of sleep. If you watch my last vlog, Recovery from Surgery, My Surgery Diaries, then, and if you haven't watched it, you probably want to watch that before you watch this video, but I left the end of the video being like, I'm feeling so much better. But unfortunately, this recovery can really just swing the other way pretty quickly if I block my stoma, like I mentioned. And unfortunately, it is getting blocked by in, like so many different soft foods and it's just so hard to know. I'm keeping it safe for sure, but then I have something like, I'm, I can eat ramen noodles, but my sister made udon noodles and I got blocked from them. So just, I, it's hard not to compare it to my recovery from surgery this time last year when I was recovering from my first ileostomy surgery because at this stage I was already eating vegetables. Uh, so I'm not progressing as well. I was having so many issues with the skin around my stomach. It was like stinging. It's really, it's really hard because the stoma needs a convex shape uh, on the bag to help it protrude and a shield as well. So I feel like I'm doing everything right. I'm cutting it to the right size, but I've still got all this irritation. So I booked a stoma nurse. It's Friday now, Friday the, no, Saturday the 19th. I booked a stoma nurse to come at 9 a.m. on Monday. So she's gonna come and just answer all of my questions, help me and hopefully help me to ensure that I'm not doing any further damage around this stoma, but I just, I wanna to talk to her about the food thing. I wanna know how normal this is for a loop ileostomy or if I should be talking to my surgeon because it just feels not normal. I am blocking it all the time. I'm up in insane pain, insane stomach cramps, and it's just, it's so uncomfortable. So I'm out of the, what I call the danger zone now in terms of that I don't have a lot of stomach cramps now. I'm sure I've still got a lot more to pass but I, I'm just gonna take it easy, gonna sip on my hot chocolate, let's see if it's a good one. Did I make a good one today? Ah, yeah, I did. That is good, that is comforting. The ritual of a hot beverage. So yeah, we're out of bed. I'm, if you've been following along for a while, you'll also know that when I'm really inflamed, my skin reflects that and shows it. So when I'm not doing well in my guts, it just rocks up on my face, so. Got these little bumps, but they'll go away. They won't They won't hang around for too long. Anyway, I've been waffling. I think I'm gonna vlog across the next few days. I am back to work next Tuesday, but only a few days uh, next week. So I am taking it easy. To be honest, when things are running at optimum, it's okay. So I just really have to be in that position. I cannot afford another blockage, another bad night of sleep. So. We're not trying anything new. We're just gonna stick with the things that I know work, keep it super simple and just hope for the best. Lots of hot tea, lots of hot drinks that helps move things through. And yeah, I'll keep you guys updated. It is a really nice Saturday morning. We have just been so blessed with the weather. I'm so grateful for it. Ty's still away. He's not back until Wednesday, but then he's back back. Thank goodness. So yeah, I'll check in with you guys soon. Hey guys, it's been quite a few hours. Oh, I've got a little leaf in the frame. It's been quite a few hours since I last checked in. I am feeling like an improvement still from the last time I checked in, uh, like no pain. I do feel pretty exhausted. I've made sure I've had some water with some pink Himalayan salt, got my uh, electrolytes back up, but I think I'm still gonna pick up some electrolyte support drinks just to stay on top of that because when a blockage releases, it definitely, uh, dehydrates you massively uh, but I am gonna go out for a little bit of a walk when I say little walk a little walk for me used to be about 30 minutes I'm gonna walk two and a half blocks to a bakery and I'm gonna get a pull apart bread uh, bread has been something just like white bread has been something that's been really easy to digest for me uh, so a bit boring like I think it's boring I'd much rather have my plant variety but I just want to get some new flavors. If it's got any little bits on it, I'm just going to pull them off. I do not want to compromise blocking up this stoma. But yeah, I'm just going to walk a couple of blocks, get that, get some fresh air, and then come back and enjoy that. I have it a bit of a tidy around the apartment. Uh, nothing crazy. I just like 
put my laundry in the laundry what am I, can I speak? Laundry, put my laundry in the dryer. And I emptied the dishwasher and I just had like a bit of a sort, bit of a tidy. Um, and I've put normal people clothes on and I've actually put a bra on, which um, that's a first, let's be real. Let's see if I can show you my pants. I've got these pants. Don't worry, I'm stable here. But basically they're like kind of flares. They've got like a little opening. They're quite cute. Um, it was a little bit of a fashion risk for me. I wouldn't say fashion risk. Maybe not. No, I wouldn't say risk. I'm not hugely adventurous. I like very basic outfits and you'll never see me like showing my outfit, but they're just like super flattering. You cannot even see. This is not a good, um, a good frame for it, but I've already perched you guys up, so I'm not going to grab it. But yeah, it's time to go out for a walk. Enjoy this incredible sunshine we've been having just day after day and get myself something to eat because it is a win during this healing process if I am actually hungry. So let's go to the bakery. Gabby? Yeah? Were you keeping me up all night wanting snuggles? I have to sleep with a pillow on my stomach so that cause she, otherwise she jumps up and you know, with my incisions and my bag, I just, have to be careful, but she still gives it a go. Hey. Oh, goodness, tired from keeping me up. Hello from this stunning face. We are taking a moment because I, I had a bit of a stoma accident. I should say an ileostomy bag accident. A whole mess, don't wanna get into it, but I had to have a shower had a nice hot shower and aunt shower is just the best for just cleansing, clearing your head. You can have a cry in the shower. You can just let it all out. And yeah, I feel so much better after a hot shower. And like you would have seen this morning, I just thought I'd put something really calming and gentle on my skin. So this is one of the masks actually from Lush. I'm going to go to the fridge to find out which one it is. Bad lighting, apologies. But this one is a catastrophe cosmetic fresh face mask they're the ones that you have to keep in the fridge uh and they because they don't have the longest shelf life maybe like a month the shelf life might be about a month but i bought that one with ty because he likes doing face masks as well got to take care of the skin and it's just really nourishing it's a clay mask and i just i really feel like my face needs a little bit of tlc i do want to get a facial i do but I also don't really feel comfortable lying completely flat at the moment, so I don't feel like I want to get any kind of pamper treatment until I feel like I'd really enjoy it. So I'm gonna delay that. I do have some beauty appointments that I'm going to, uh, I've booked a couple, but that I want to get leading up to the wedding. So I'm not gonna do anything with the hair. First and foremost, this is wedding hair, obviously not this, but this is the wedding hair color and I'm not gonna get a cut. So nothing before the wedding for the hair. Um, I did have an impulsive moment yesterday because I live really close to, it's not my salon, but really close to a lovely salon where I'm sure they would have done just a curtain bang trim for me. I messaged my girlfriend yesterday and I said, should I get a fringe trim before the wedding? And she said, no, don't do it because um, I am probably just gonna wear my head down and I don't really want those curtain framing pieces with what I'm gonna do. So this is the hair, but I will probably get, um, uh, I've booked nails and uh, feet, nails and feet, um, hand, pedicure and manicure, uh, that, but that's gonna be back in New Zealand with my family and all my gals, and that will be lovely. Uh, but I need to do eyelashes, eyebrows, yeah, and I'll probably do a facial. But whether or not, part of me kind of wants to wait to do my facial in New Zealand. There's a facial list quite close to my old house. They use very similar products to like some of the ones that I've had here, but just I know that my skin won't break out from it. It'll be nice to see her. So maybe that's where I'll go. I'm not sure. But yeah, I'm just doing a couple little things that are just gonna make me feel better. I was reading my book. Um, I'm reading a book, like my, so my girlfriend and I, did I mention this? I may have mentioned this, but we've kind of started like a two person book club in that uh, she read a book that I read 
and I'm reading a book that she's read and I read like a big chunk of it but then when I had my surgery I just couldn't read for weeks because I was nauseous so I'm pretty close to the end of it enjoying it so I want to finish that off uh, and then yeah just have a relaxing afternoon tonight I'm having a baked potato party with Sophie and James but I'm obviously not going to have the skin. I'm basically just going to put some like cheese, butter, and marmite in with the innards of the potato, scoop it out. So it's just kind of like mash for me, but baked just gives it a certain je ne sais quoi. Uh, so that is the vibe. Right now, you've probably seen this face mask dry across the time that I've been rambling. Um, but I'm just staying on top of that water, going to read some more of my book, and I will show you our potato situation later. Sophie, what TV show have we been binge watching for for weeks now? We have blown through, like this is the first season because I don't know why, but we started on the second season. But So Sophie's gone for the gravy and mushy peas and veggie sausage. And I think James is doing the same. And I'm going for vegan butter. There's a little bit of jam floating in there with some Marmite. That's gonna be mine. <laughs> I'm just watching the sunrise and it's very beautiful. It's just like, I was gonna say, it's very much my favorite thing to do. It's, it's definitely becoming just my favorite time of day in this apartment. I just feel like so much peace when I wake up in the morning and I just come out and I look at the sunrise, especially with all these beautiful winter crisp mornings. I'm definitely layered up. Hold on, I'm gonna take you back inside because it is very, very noisy. Um, it is definitely, I've just got some TV on in the background. Uh, it's definitely, oh, Gibby you. She's up there, she loves that basket. Ty wants to get her a cushion for the basket because she just sleeps in it all the time and it is just like a wicker basket. But it has to be the right thickness because she likes to rest her head on the top of it. So we really just need like a very thin cushion, almost like one of those uh, padding uh, cushions that you put on an outdoor chair or something. So I'll keep an eye out for that. Uh, but yeah, so going to Whistler today, I'm layered up. So I actually put on a little bit of makeup, put some sunblock on, got ready. I've got uh, layers on under this jumper and I'm going to wear a coat. I've got leggings on under my jeans um, because I haven't been out in the cold really. I like honestly since my surgery, before my surgery, we weren't wearing coats yet. So that my surgery was October 26th and I remember going for a walk the morning of my surgery and I was wearing a jumper and pants and, and shoes and I was absolutely fine. So it definitely uh, got a lot colder while I've been inside. We're now almost a month later and yeah, the temperature has massively dropped. And honestly, I'm a little bit nervous because today is a bit of an outing. I haven't been outside of the house for longer than sort of an hour. I would say since uh, my surgery and that's just been going across the street. It's not been actually like proper outing. I'm pretty sure unless, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's That's correct. So, you know, it, it is a little bit longer away from my home comforts. Uh, I listened to my surgeon and the fact that my output has been, it's great that it's working. Like let's just praise be that I didn't wake up with chronic pain. Like I went through the night um, without chronic pain, but lots of output, really watery, really liquidy. And she said that when that happens that I have to, after I have like my breakfast or my lunch, have to have one emodium to slow it down. You don't have to have it every day, but just to slow it down because I, I feel the dehydration. I woke up this morning, even though I drank a lot of water in the night and was really mindful of it. I woke up and instantly had that lightheadedness, head rush when I got up. So I've, since waking up, I've really rehydrated with electrolyte support, uh, as well as um, just like staying on top of just drinking regular old water. And I also had a vitamin C, like effervescent. It's also got collagen in it. Um, wait, I think I've got them. I think I've got them here. I'm watching old episodes of Made in Chelsea. Um, yeah, these, these ones from Organica. This was actually gifted a little while ago and I've really got my use out of them. They gave me like five or six different flavors. And Organica is actually the electrolyte support that I use as well, but I just finished that. So I'm gonna have to buy that one now. And I would totally, uh, like even though that was gifted, I would totally repurchase that. Um, 
but yeah, so Whistler's going to be a bit of a journey. You might be thinking, Whistler day trip? I mean, I know a lot of people do that to ski, but we're really just going just to be in amongst the snow, to have a nice coffee, to have a little bite to eat. Uh, they'll have all their Christmas lights up. We, we actually have done this uh, the last couple of Christmases because, you know, with everything with restrictions that there's been across the last couple of years, we haven't been able to travel or do a lot of that kind of thing. She's emerging. Uh, so it was just like a special treat and I was worried I wasn't going to get to Whistler this winter season because I'm definitely not going to be allowed to ski uh, because I'm hoping to have my next surgery early next year. Are you coming to say hello? Um, and yeah, so I wanted to be able to get there because Whistler is magical. If you've never been before, it is, it's, it's like a snow globe and honestly, I, visit, I visited Whistler twice before I actually moved to Canada. I went I went there twice and it was one of the draw cards to live in Vancouver. Uh, so yeah, whilst most other winters I've been there quite a lot. Uh, yeah, do you want to go outside? She loves the balcony. She woke up this morning, she said, I want to go out in the balcony. Also, side note, if you've been following along for a while, do you remember we used to have the hummingbird come visit the window at our old place? Well, I was in a meeting the other day and the hummingbird came up right to the window and Gibby was like, <gasps> And we call the hummingbird HB and we're like, HB's found Gibby, which is super sweet. Anyway, I've been rambling for ages, so I'll probably check in again a little bit later. Um, I am going to get a proper coffee, a barista coffee today. So it's all very exciting. Probably decaf, but you know, you know, <laughs> still exciting. Oh, this is the good so we've just arrived in Whistler and the mountain is looking pretty sparse of snow. I think they've got the snow machines going. Pre-season's supposed to open next weekend and Sophie and James have a edge pass. Like they've just bought a concession pass, but it gives you unlimited pre-season skiing, which is until the 9th of December. But looking at the slopes, I'm not sure they'll be here next weekend. It needs a big, a big snowfall. Uh, which hopefully they have uh, but yeah so we're just gonna pay for our parking find a toilet some busting and then go to purebred <laughs> got my purebred coffee let's have a sip it was mainly just fun i just got home excuse my beanie here but this little one wants to cuddle with me and I always feel so bad because her initial thing is that she wants to climb over my lower abdomen, which she obviously still can't. Um, so she kind of knows, I feel like, oh, she's gone. She kind of knows to guide herself a little bit higher up. She tries tentatively to get up there. So I just sort of guide her so she lies across here and she seems to be okay with that. Uh, but I had a really nice day. So I... I didn't really film that much there, um, but we walked around the village. We picked up a couple of Christmas presents um, just for some friends back home, family back home. Uh, and uh, we had a treat at Purebred. I was really after a lemon loaf, found my lemon loaf. And then we went to burger splits and I didn't show my burger, uh, but basically I was reading up a lot about the stoma nutrition uh, for loop ileostomies and I read that lettuce and tomato are okay. Now, I don't think obviously in copious amounts, I don't think I could process that. And I know I said I wasn't gonna take any risks, but I was keen to, I'd had tomato. I've had tomato once before, but you just get rid of the seeds. Uh, so I decided I was gonna order a Beyond Meat burger because the Beyond Meat is like really processed. It's really processed. So ultimately ultra processed food seems to go down really well here uh, with the stroma. So I had a Beyond uh, meat patty, uh, vegan cheese. I did order a sesame bun and I actually had to peel off the top so I didn't get the seeds. And then I had a little bit of lettuce and some tomato. And I, it was delicious. I probably only ate half of it because I have to chew for so long, basically until it's just doesn't even taste like anything anymore. It's like silt. Uh, and then I swallowed it. So by the time I like, they were long finished their burgers and yeah, I was like done with that. Uh, but I haven't had any blockage because that was like, it takes them almost two hours to drive back from Whistler. So I haven't had a blockage from that. I would know by now, uh, which is great. So that means I can have a little bit of amount of lettuce. So that means I can have things like sandwiches and burgers, a little bit more sustenance. Um, but I, 
I sort of can't experiment much with the veggie patties because one, I'm allergic to mushroom, but also you're not allowed it because it expands. Two, I can't be having things like chickpeas and lentils here. I could have hummus because that's so processed, but yeah, you just have to be super careful. But anyway, it was really nice to just walk around the village. It's such a vibe, such an atmosphere, and just to be around the snow was so lovely. And Whistler just brings back a lot of fond memories. I was trying to think when I've last been there this year, and it's just always been for just lovely things. I went there in May with my parents, and we saw a bear, and we went up the gondola, and it was just really nice. And then I went there back in February with Taylor, like I mentioned, and for her birthday. So, uh, you know, the only times I've been there this year, it's just been for really nice reasons. Um, and... Yeah, I think I'm just going to chill out a little bit, but I want to have a bit of a tidy of the house because I do have my stoma nurse coming in the morning. Um, so just want the house to be in good shape. And I also just want to have all my stoma products organized um, so that I can go through with her the stuff that I use. Um, and yeah, I did just have to change because at the moment I'm wearing a two-part bag system. I just had to change the bag part because it is... You can hear my stoma farting. It's just so loud. Honestly, I named my stomas, and my last one was called Aaron Burr. If you know, you know. And then this one is called Gaston, and aptly named Gaston from Beauty and the Beast. But Gaston because it does a lot of farts. Um, but yeah, I had to change the the bottom part of the bag, the clip-on part of the bag, because the other one was soaking through the fabric of the bag like and it's got a plastic lining which just shouldn't happen, especially because it's only been on for two days. I didn't want to do a full change of the bag. I don't know what I've mentioned, honestly, but I didn't want to do a full change of the bag because she's coming tomorrow. But anyway, uh, so I'm going to probably put something on the TV, post around the house. It's really clean. I, I vacuumed and um, mopped the floor yesterday, but just like a couple of dishes in the sink and, you know, tidy up the bathroom, things like that. Anyway, big ramble. I will um, talk soon. Good morning. It is Monday morning. It's just after eight o'clock. I've got a shower, get myself ready, and uh, the nurse is coming for 9 a.m. And I'm really looking forward to it. As I mentioned, I've written down a bunch of questions, and I hope that it's going to, like, I really hope that the issues that I'm having, I will have a really good plan going forward to resolve them, both the wound around my stoma and uh, get a little bit more understanding about the loop ileostomy and food. So I hope that sets me up in a better position. I am, I have a, bit, a little bit of work to do today. Our car, I've got to pick up the car today because uh, it's in the shop. It just had to get some stuff done and I had a really bad health day on Friday. Um, I was in a lot of pain on Friday and the shops closed over the weekend so I couldn't pick it up on Friday uh, but I feel good enough to do it today. So I'm going to pick up the car then I'm going to pop to the supermarket and pick up a couple of things and because I'll have the car I'm going to drive to the superstore because it's quite far from my house. I'm going to drive to the superstore because like it's just so much more affordable but I've been going to the supermarket so only a few blocks away because it's in walking distance. So that's kind of a loose plan for today. I think Sophie and James are going to come for dinner again, uh, but I'm going to be super careful with my food today because I'm going back to work tomorrow and I don't want anything to impact that. Um, so yeah, that's the loose plan for the day. But I will definitely debrief you after the stoma nurse has left. Time to shower and I'm also going to have a coffee. Okay, it's a few minutes before nine. Tell me why I'm so nervous for this nurse to come to my house. I feel like I'm going on a first date. Like I've, I've rushed around the house and just like tweaked things. I vacuumed yesterday afternoon, but I just vacuumed again because Gibby likes to get her litter everywhere. But I've like lit a candle and I'm just like trying to figure out, am I wearing the right jumper? But to be fair, I'm figuring out what to wear because we're both going to be accessing my stomach. So I need to be able to pull up this top easily. I need to have pants that are going to easily roll down. So, okay, I guess figuring out what to wear. But, you know, I was just kind of like, I, you know, I've got all my supplies. I've got everything out. Almost like you could consider that to be a snack tray and drinks. I was even thinking like, okay, I'll fill up the jug so that I offer a tea. And she's like, oh, if it's no problem. And I'd be like, oh, it's already full. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm overthinking it. I feel like I'm on a first date. I really hope we like each other and hit it off. Um, but yeah, I just thought I'd share because I just found myself running around doing those like little last minute tweaks you do if you have someone coming over. Lol. Okay guys, if that was a date, then I got stood up. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, not really. She thought that I was coming into clinic. I thought she was coming to my house because I did book under their home 
uh, initial visit, um, but she said that, yeah, there was a miscommunication basically. And so she had back-to-back -back appointments in the clinic, meaning she couldn't actually come in, come see me at my house. So uh, even though the pharmacy is like, it's all within this, this big pharmacy, uh, is quite close to where I live. So she's booked me in for a noon appointment, which is pretty soon. So I'm just walking there now and um, I've got my supplies with me, which was what confused me. Like I can only bring a limited amount of my supplies in terms of like what I use and stuff. And I can't bring all the things that I would use to clean and everything like that. So I don't know. I really hope that this appointment, I leave, I don't know, feeling better because like I'm going back to work tomorrow and I don't feel anxious about the thought of standing up my feet or giving energy or you know being at work it's just I'm so anxious around the idea of getting another blockage meaning that I'm anxious around my food I sometimes look at my food on my plate and I'm just so stressed it's going to cause a blockage because the blockages are just like debilitating I'm so okay and I'm doing so well when that's not happening and I know I'm repeating myself but it helps me to talk to you guys. You guys are a great sounding board. So yeah, I am feeling anxious around my food and I just wanna try and stick to the same food as much as possible, especially for this week. You know, when I get a successful week of no blockages, then I can start to be more adventurous. Like, I mean, yesterday, like I mentioned, I had a little bit of lettuce and tomato. That was adventurous, but I, I guess I chewed it to every inch of its life and it wasn't a lot. But today we're taking no risks, no adventures in that area. Um, yeah, I just, want to play it safe but I haven't had more than three days without a blockage so today is day three actually so hopefully tomorrow we make it to day four and then day five and then we just build upon that and I know that my confidence will increase but for now I yeah I just want to be safe I want to have the wound healed I want to understand a little bit more about this and yeah just I just want to be healed I want to rush through healing I I know I seem so patient but I'm so not I I want my physical body back I want to be able to do yoga and lift weights and move my body but I'm not going to do that it's not where my body it's not the priority of what my body needs right now it's just something that I desire for my mental health but right now being outside and walking we're happy with that we'll take that win Four leaves are fallen and it's beautiful in this area. My hands do feel like they're gonna fall off. They're pretty cold. So I'm gonna put the camera away and I will debrief with you after my appointment. Hello guys, I apologize for the bad lighting and just I just got out of the shower. So I haven't even brushed my hair or done my skincare, but I wanted to check in and even though the last clip for you was only a few seconds ago, for me that was about 24 hours ago because when I came out of that appointment, there was just so much to process. I was quite emotional. I just, I wasn't in a space to debrief what had happened. I needed a little bit of time away from it to uh, just process it, talk to my loved ones. And yeah, it, you know, these things you just have to kind of, you can't rush yourself to accept not saying that you just have to accept it but you can't rush yourself to process these things and so here I am finally feeling in a place that I can talk to you guys about it and it is a bit of a spiel uh, but as you know I went to the stoma nurse to check in on the skin around because it's still really red raw and opened and despite my best efforts I've been unable to improve that as well as the blockages and uh, you know constant pain with that I, I really wanted to to like get to the bottom of it all the stoma nurse was incredible, amazing, super supportive, and I just felt really seen and heard. And so I couldn't have asked for better, um, which is part of what made it so emotional. I just felt so validated. I went in there and she took off my bag and she took one look at my loop ileostomy and she said, this is like one of the worst, if not the worst loop ileostomy she's ever seen. Now, just before I continue, I wanna go in and say that I'm not blaming my surgeon whatsoever. These surgeries are complicated, loop ileostomies are always less than ideal and they're temporary. And it just like, when you're fin like finished with the surgery, it's so swollen that you can't really see where the opening is anyway. Uh, so it's one of those things where like, 
it's on my communication with her if I needed to go back for an emergency visit and my follow-up appointment with her to obviously communicate where I'm at. Um, obviously, there's a responsibility from her, totally. I'm just saying that there's no blame game here. Like, I'm not in danger per se, but I have been left with a bad ileostomy, loop ileostomy. These loop ileostomies are obviously less than ideal and the small intestine that's pulling down towards the J pouch, it pulling down and mine is so taut that it's actually rolled the opening to the stoma almost under. It's not even like exposed really where the opening is, which is why I've often felt a lot of pressure, had blockages and yeah, no wonder there's been a challenge because I've not actually been able to push anything through that's been any kind of formed, which is where we've seen the blockages and it's taken time for the acid and enzymes to break the food down to then it is liquid. And so that's where a lot of that pain has been. Now, she usually does a stimulation test where she puts like her finger in and she was unable to do that with mine because you just cannot see the opening. Uh, she put some protective barrier around the skin and that's at least something that we should be able to improve. But she said that mine is so bad that she wanted to email the surgeon and she wanted to get it reversed and my J pouch surgery much quicker within the next few weeks. I told her I was going to New Zealand and that that couldn't be possible because I wanted to go home. And she said, okay, well, you know, she asked first of all, would I consider postponing my trip? But I said no. And she said, I'm not in any direct danger or anything as long as I don't continue to get blockages because that could cause an obstruction. Um, but we're now sort of being able to navigate those foods. So hopefully won't get a lot of blockages or any at all, hopefully. But she said she's still gonna email the surgeon so that I'm put higher on a priority list. And I'll circle back to that in a moment. But basically in terms of care, she was able to help out with the skin aspect of it. She gave me new bags and the bags have a deeper convex, which I'll kind of explain in a minute, deeper convex. So my stoma is small and it's rolled under and it's being pulled under. If this is my skin on my stomach, this is my stoma here, let's say, and my stoma is sitting down here. The convex bag, as well as I now have a belt around my waist that's clipped either side to the stoma bag, is helping to like push it out so that it can protrude. So if it's sitting down here, these apparatuses are helping it to push out, which hopefully will help the opening be slightly greater so that there's less pressure. At the moment, it's uncomfortable, it's, it's painful and I talk a lot about the positive things and I am really good at that and I'm really good at positive spinning and when I'm talking to you guys, I am having a good day. Today, I'm having a good day. Does that mean I'm not uncomfortable and that I don't still have like um, a bit of pain? Yeah, I do, but it's definitely manageable and I'm able to go about my day um, and I've had 15 years of a chronic illness. Like This is something that I'm able to, I guess, kind of um, process and work through and it doesn't like completely write off my day. But when I am blocked, it is completely debilitating and that is what the stoma nurse was really concerned about was the blockages because they shouldn't be longer than six hours. I now know that if it's longer than six hours, I need to go to the emergency room and I've had some up to 24 hours. So I now know that and I, and I won't push it. If I have a blockage again, I will go to the emergency. Uh, but those days I'm not vlogging, I'm not talking to you guys, but it is really uncomfortable. She said that I shouldn't try to progress my food and introduce new foods because I need to keep things as liquidy as possible in order to keep things as safe as possible for me, which was really hard to hear because obviously I'm going back to New Zealand. I don't even think I'm gonna be able to eat the catering at my wedding and just like so many things. To, I just, I really don't wanna get upset. It's just like, it's not about the food. Like food is an element, it's a part of this, but it's just, just continuing to have challenges and just, she was like, I'm so sorry that this is what you've been left with. So she emailed my surgeon and my surgeon, I, I like I said, she's amazing. I have so much respect for her. Her assistant got back to me within the hour and they've booked me an in-person visit so that I can see the surgeon and she can look at the stoma herself. And I guess that for her will see how, where I'm at in her priority list. And I mean that in the greatest respect possible in that she is a colorectal cancer surgeon primarily and she has all the cancer patients. And to me, their top priority, of course. And then she's got a lot of people who are having a similar surgery to what I just had for J pouches and things like that. And so she has to work out what is 
more pressing than others. And so it was supposed to be an over the phone appointment for my post-op care and it's turned out that it will be in person. And um, I'm really grateful for that. But it was just a lot to process because I'm already struggling to keep weight on um, in post-op because of my food. And I have a lot of fear around food. Like I've mentioned, I have a lot of anxiety around it. And now to know that, you know, I can't be progressing and being adventurous, um, not adventurous is the wrong word, but, you know, trying to introduce new foods to my stomach at the stages where you are supposed to. I can't do that because it's not safe for me. Um, the pain, the recovery, the fact that she basically said other than the skin around it, nothing's going to improve until I no longer have this. And I just burst into tears when she put the stoma belt around my bag because I was just like, wow, thank you so much for your help. Like you've been so helpful. I just feel so seen, so heard. She just took such good care of me. She's connected me up with a support group and I actually got a Zoom call with them tonight, which I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward to talking with people in a similar situation. I There's a lot of things I don't understand about this process and I'm learning more and more all the time, but I'm really grateful for the healthcare here in Canada. And this is, I just want to make it clear that this is by no means feeling that I've been done wrong but I've just have some really bad luck here you know really bad luck with my setup and my situation that's going to be so unique person to person so I am still really grateful for the care that I've received but I'm I'm sad that this is the situation that I'm in I just I'm so grateful for my family and for Ty I just I couldn't have a more supportive group but you know it it's hard. It's hard to process these things. Yeah. And that's where I'm at. I don't want to have a, but da 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 da, but you know, I've got this and I've got that because I, I have a lot of things in life to be grateful for and that I feel really lucky for. So I, I'm not trying to justify like or minimize my discomfort and my struggles at the moment. But I, yeah, I think I'm just going to take a few days away from vlogging and, and hopefully when I update you guys soon, I have, um, yeah, Ty will be home and, and we can have a more joyful vlog. And I love you guys. Thank you so much for your support. I'm gonna wrap this up here. I'm gonna brush my hair, blow dry my hair, do a face mask, watch some trashy TV and just chill out. But talk to you soon.